And during that time is when my mental capacity just was really uh, in the down the dump. I was depressed. I had anxiety. I felt suicidal. Asking God, like, what is my purpose? Because I'm always being abused, and I don't know why. So I said, Lord, just take me. I'm tired. So I had moments like that because I don't remember a time I wasn't being abused. I would say that abused people and hurt people hurt people, right? So my mother, um, I believe, was abused. My father, he was abused by his mother based on her shame. She had a baby with her, with her first cousin. My mother didn't find this out until years later after they'd been married for over 20 years. She found out from a sister when, some, when his father died. These generational curses of family business, we need to stop hiding behind family business. Abuse is just not family business. People move on and they let uncle so-and-so get away with molesting a person and ruining their life. Because life is completely different once this has happened to you. But that cycle needs to be broken and that cycle is broken with me. So I decided to devote my time to being an advocate, to help other women, whatever it is, if I could just help one person, it matters to me. I know that they'll get out. But the hardest part is trying to protect our children. And the funny thing about this whole thing right now is that um, I'm very, very careful with who my daughter dates. But they didn't give out information, driver's license, things like that, and she couldn't date them. And... I don't want to live this way, but I just have to be sure. And I am red flag all over. <laughs> so I think that's an issue for me, right? I learn to trust people, but I watch for the red flags. The red flags help a lot, okay? Believe me. Because even when I've been trying to date <laughs> now, red flags. <laughs> I'm telling you, people show you who they really are within a short period of time. It doesn't take long. I promise you it doesn't. Do not ignore your red flags. It is very, very important not to ignore them because we choose to ignore them. You know, it doesn't have to be physical abuse. It can be mental abuse. You know, it could be sexual abuse. There's been like different phases of this abuse that I felt like I was very suicidal. I just wanted it to be over, but then I thought about my kids during the times where I felt at my lowest. I thought about who would find me, what would happen, how would they feel, and then those are the moments that stopped me. I think if I hadn't had children, I, I don't know what it would have happened to me at this point, but I'm thankful for them. I'm thankful for my my grandchildren. I'm thankful for all the people in my life that helped me. I'm thankful for the relationships I have with being an advocate and going out in my community and just loving on people that need it. I will continue to do this until I just can't anymore. Like, this is me. This is a part of me that I share with everybody else in the world. Whoever hears my story can relate. And maybe more people come forward and share their story because it helps. I would say to someone, if you think it's abuse, nine times out of ten it is. And some things people are very shocked to think that it is abuse when I go out and speak. And these are all ages of women. These are not just young women that are experiencing these things that don't know. These are women that are my age, even in marriage. No is no. And if I don't want to do this particular act and it's uncomfortable, it's not, it's not acceptable. So don't think if you're married to someone that you have to do things that are uncomfortable for you. Because uncomfortable means that it's on the borderline of being abused. And I just wanted to let somebody know that, you know, get out of it. It's When it's toxic, get out. If it's a verbal abuse, get out. Because a lot of times... You know it, but you're not really sure. Ask somebody else. They have plenty of hotline numbers and things like that you can call now. And I would just, I would suggest it. I would suggest talking to a friend. 
And if you're making plans to get out of a relationship like this, have a have a plan. If you don't have a real plan and the plan's not going to work out, have some things put aside so that you can at your neighbor's house, at a friend's house, somebody that you can trust. Because believe me, somebody's going to help. I just wanted to make sure that people know that they really matter, that there's hope, that they can start over. It's okay to start over. Don't be ashamed. Because a lot of times we feel ashamed. I feel ashamed. I was feeling ashamed. I was like, oh my God, like, I'm sharing my story. People know me. And then I was just like, you know what? It's not for them. It's for somebody listening that's afraid to take that next next step. 